And so the time has come to leave behind the beautiful green north. And the north is indeed green and beautiful, but there's still plenty of sightseeing before us, so we have to keep on moving. But before we leave the north, we have to see one more place, one of the official highlights of Jordan as such, a place called sometimes the Pompeii of the East. We have to go to a town called Gerash, and there we will find the ancient ruins of a town in Greek called Geraza. So, I am not a big fan of such um, comparisons as Pompeii of the East. And we were actually kind of worried with Vicky that it is going to be a bit of a, a tourist trap. And the first seconds, well, they kind of confirm it. You don't actually enter any ruins. You enter a huge hall full of souvenir shops and such. We actually kind of felt more like entering an airport or something. Although I have to admit, people were not pesky. You don't want to buy anything. You just walk straight on and that's it. We are going to come back to this hall later on, but now let's go straight to the ruins. And I have to say, Geraza has a way of introducing itself. Straight up, first thing you see is the beautiful Hadrian's Arch, which is actually not an arch, it is a monumental gate built by the city for um, the Emperor Hadrian, who decided to winter here 129 to 30 and Hadrian himself is called one of the five good Caesars which was pretty much the uh, golden age of uh, Rome itself and it was obviously golden age of the city the gate is absolutely breathtaking of course it is partly reconstructed partly rebuilt still it is breathtaking so let's have a look at some interesting details. For example, as always, the capitals of the columns are elaborate, but here not only at the top, but also at the bottom, which is uh, supposedly a unique feature. And generally speaking, the level of detail is astounding. But let's go through the gate. Um, the only thing that's missing here are big wooden doors and on the issue of elaborate details. Today we can simply take a photo, then enlarge to see properly any detail we want. But when you are there, you cannot really see, for example, high up at the gate all the details. So besides looking for beautiful monuments, also look for this rubble. Because among the rubble, quite often you are going to find what normally is on top and you cannot see it properly. Well, now you can. So, more rubble coming later on, but let's continue to uh, another important building um, in the vicinity. Something that was pretty important for Roman cities. A Hippodrome. So, a stadium 244 meters long for chariot racing. Romans loved it, pretty much as we love, I don't know, football today. So the charioteers were very famous and here there is something supposedly unique. Those are the blocks, kind of starting gates from where the chariots would start. Supposedly no other hippodrome to date found in ancient Rome um, had those preserved. And the uh, seating for the uh, spectators is also here in very good shape. It's a place for 15,000 people. Mind you, Geraza, at the top of its golden age, probably had no more than 25,000 inhabitants. So, the Hippodrome is huge for the city. But from all the Hippodromes found to date, it is actually the smallest. So, it is here that they decided to do some reconstructions. Unfortunately, pandemic dealt a little blow so this modern iteration of the ancient chariot races we are not going to see anymore. Now, you're looking at the shops. Of course, there were shops on the side of Hippodrome. Many people means plenty of business, but we're going to go straight to the horizon, to the actual gate and the south gate to Geraza proper. 
So in order to get our bearings, let's start with the map. First of all, you are going to see that the city had this kind of circular shape. At the bottom in red is the Hippodrome and Hadrian's Arch behind it, because the city in its golden age wanted to expand. And you can see it in the arch itself. Look at the sides. They're very simple, as if cut with a knife. The idea was to attach the new city walls. The new city walls were never built. Going back to the map of the town itself, you can see this um, dotted line in the middle from north to south. That's the main river, dividing the town into west and east. The western side was public, most of the important buildings and temples were there. Now the eastern side, most probably, was always residential, as it is till the very day. This is where modern Gerash is today. So that's what you're seeing at the moment. Well, let's go back to antiquity. Let us start straight at the Temple of Zeus. Two main deities, Zeus and Artemis, already tells you that this place has Hellenistic roots. Either Alexander the Great himself, most probably later the Seleucid dynasty, funded the town as a kind of a garrison town for the veterans of their armies. But hardly anything survived from the Hellenistic times as first century before Christ wasn't exactly stable. So most probably one of those days Gerasa was raised to the ground and then it joined a very interesting thing, Decapolis, a union of 10 towns from the region and two of them we saw already. Philadelphia, so modern Amman, and Gadara were also a part of it. Either the idea of the union was of the towns themselves for the sake of security, or, according to other sources, the idea was of Gnaeus Pompeius. If the ten cities unite as one polity, then still the Roman Republic can pronounce the Capolis as the Roman protectorate, which kinda happened actually, and Rome slowly but surely started taking over. And as the golden age of the town is the first century after Christ, the Roman times, very often what we see is Roman, not Hellenistic, although the names of the deities still remained Greek. The remains around you are of a Roman sanctuary to Zeus. Rather unlucky, it is going to keep coming back later on, and here should stand Zeus himself. So, now you've got a choice. This is modern Zeus in front of you, and I haven't found the original one from the sanctuary, but there is a smaller version in the museum. Choose the one you prefer. Although on the day of our visit, Helios ruled, not Zeus. Anyway, what's missing here are monumental steps towards the sanctuary, but you can see something right next to it. Another very important building. Theatres for the Romans were not simply theatres as they are today. A place of social gathering? Yes. Entertainment? Also. But also it had um, a bit of religious significance added to it. So theatres were very important. In Gerasa, three were found and the South Theatre where we are is the biggest of the three. It could accommodate 3,000 people. In a city that was never bigger than 25,000, that's one-fifth, one-sixth of the population. And of course, great acoustics. So now, let me show you around with some music in the background.
What is going on? Scottish music in antiquity? The issue is going to be explained in the future. But now, as we started mixing antiquity and modern days... Uh, 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 here you have an early Roman electric cable and late Hellenistic coffee cup. What a sophisticated society they were, weren't they? Well, joking aside, they were indeed sophisticated. Here you have how the scene would look like in its heyday. It is a 19th century iteration, but I'm pretty sure it is spot on. Anyway, we're back at the Southern Gate because I started with the Temple of Zeus um, for the sake of chronology, to have a bit of Hellenistic background, but in reality, when you enter the old town, you enter through the south gate and you do not see the Temple of Zeus. It is hidden on the left behind the platform. What you actually see, the first important thing, is a place called the Oval Plaza, which is beautifully surrounded with a colonnade and it's an interesting detail, as normally when you enter a Roman city through a main gate, you will start walking down the Cardo, straight, long, main road. And here, probably because of the topography, it didn't happen. So, again you will see the Temple of Zeus, let's jump up there, and you will see now beautifully the Oval Plaza and the Cardo in the background. My guess is the old Geraza architects didn't want to simply have a curve. They wanted something more spectacular and they got it. You have a huge plaza in front of an important temple. That's one good point. And also you kind of hiding that the main street has to take a curve. And this is the Cardo itself, the main part of it, leaving the Oval Plaza and then continuing 800 meters to the North Gate. As it is the main road, let's start walking it. Unlike many cities in Europe today, the Roman cities in antiquity did not have main market square. The main road is the place for most of the shops. So we would have them on both sides here and the place was busy as is testified by those kind of grooves. Those come from hundreds of years of wheels of all the traffic that used to pass through the Cardo. But it's not only little shops. Every now and then you would have access to little markets. So let's visit one of them now. And actually it wasn't a big deal. It was probably a fruit and veg market and yet it is beautifully laid out. You have plenty of columns, they form two circles. The smaller one that you're seeing at the moment, in the middle you will see a fountain, then you have the second circle bigger, between the columns would be a street and then outside the bigger circle are the shops. So, because you've got a fountain here, you have access to water and my guess is also there would be a wooden, a wooden roof supported by the columns. So you have water, you have shade, enjoy your shopping. And what was sold? Definitely wine and oil. If you have any doubts, such clay camels bearing the amphorae were found in abundance, so no doubts anymore, I guess. And on the topic of merchandise, I have to admit this is something I keep forgetting myself. The city did not look like it does today, 2000 years ago. The city looked like this. It was full of merchandise. So I kind of at the same time don't like it and like it very much as it is giving us a feel for ancient Geraza. I'm kind of wondering though if they had the same lines to toilets which is possible, they did have a sewage system. Any doubts? Well, here you have a drain cover. Such beautiful things you find when you walk down the Cardo. But not only the Cardo was important, another street was Decumano. And here we have them intersecting. 
those kind of pillars with the little shops this is something called tetrapylon the shops would originally be around us and unfortunately today all ruined this is how it would look like back in the day rather representative i would say so from there let's jump straight to the north side of the cardo as there is something i think unusual normally one cardo one decumano here you have two decumanos so in front of you is second tetrapylon the north one and today it looks way better than the previous one it's got it got rebuilt but it's kind of heavy-ish in theory the previous one was more representative because the four separate pylons gave it a loftier feel and generally the north is slightly uh, abundant here you've got ionic capitals on top of the columns before it was corinthian most probably this is actually how the cardo originally looked like eventually it got renovated corinthian capitals replaced ionic ones minus 200 meters of the cardo in the north why the north is abandoned no idea and it is actually kind of weird as there were important institutions in the north as well a very important institution for every roman city were baths so now in front of you the great western baths unfortunately in a ruined state with one exception many roofs were rebuilt in modernity what you are about to see is one of the great highlights of geraza a true feat of construction abilities of the romans a conical nine meter roof what you're seeing survived 2000 years intact spectacular although it may be just a little detail for us today we are not going to see the great eastern baths as they are in the modern town of Gerash, but also there they found something very important the muses supposedly the only muses found in modern near east only six not nine and all of them decapitated but hey they say it's important so here i show them great now let's walk back towards the tetrapylon let's continue the decumano towards the west as there are more important institutions waiting for us on the way some more drain covers as those are one of my favorite details here but we're gonna look for agora basilica and bulleterion in other words the government quarter and actually we are kind of already here somewhere around us or in front of us would be the agora another word would be forum so a huge square for the public so they can come and for example listen to public announcements another important institution would be the basilica today i say basilica i guess everybody thinks of a church originally basilica was kind of a governmental administrative judicial center and it would stand pretty much in front of you also this is where the city archives were kept unfortunately nothing survived neither of the basilica nor the archives fortunately a third important building did survive the bulleterion so bulle is kind of a city council this is the place where they would meet to discuss important issues and vote on them what you're gonna see actually is more of an audion so a little theater as it was expanded later but there is a detail telling us about the meetings of the bulle there are greek letters for particular members where they should sit also the citizens of the city were divided into 12 kind of tribes usually associated with particular gods and they also had every tribe a special place here and this is supposedly also unique on a scale of the ancient roman world no other place has such an important detail and i think another important detail that should be mentioned yes latin was the language of the ancient roman empire but mostly in the west you will find it as you can see here in geraza as well 
but from all the inscriptions found only 4% were in Latin. A bit of local languages as well, but the language of the east of ancient Roman Empire was Greek, hence it is Greek alphabet that was used in the bulle to mark the spaces for sitting. And as beautiful and as picturesque and as important as this place is, still not my personal highlight. To see my two personal highlights, we have to go back to the middle of the Cardo. And here we are, in front of you, the first of my two highlights, the Nymphaeum. Some kind of a temple slash elaborate fountain. My little obsession with water is shared by ancient Romans if one of the most representative beautiful buildings is basically a huge fountain and it is impressive as such let's look at the details and it gets more impressive still the amount of intricacy and artistry on this building is spectacular but craftsmanship aside it's all about the water so let's have a view from above. We can see the main big water tank and a small basin in front of it. So, kind of simple actually. The holes that you see in the Nymphaeum now, of course, they would be more elaborate carvings back in the day. Water would flow into the main tank and then from the main tank into this basin for people to use. There were also little canals spreading water around the city, but they didn't survive. And that was my first highlight. Second, the story is a bit more difficult. We see here a big um, gate, obviously leading us to an important place. But to start the story and appreciate the whole thing, we have to go east of the Cardo for, the, for a moment. Where you have the main street at the bottom, this is the beginning of the first monumental stairs. Those kind of teeth is what remains of the first gate and then the road continues processional way so let's jump straight into the middle of it we are looking east let's turn west the processional way will cross the cardo you will see the big gate the stairs in the background let's jump straight there and here we are at the top finally seeing the goal finally seeing the temple to the main goddess of Geraza, Artemis herself. Now, I know that today it is very difficult for us to imagine the whole process. Let's try anyway. You start in the middle of the ancient town at the bottom of the hill. You keep on walking up every now and then you have a gate. Most probably it was some kind of a procession, so they would have to stop, there would be rituals, it's not non-stop walking. But each next gate, each next staircase is bigger and more monumental. And you never see the temple of Artemis. It is only at the very end of the stairs, after the whole process, that you get there. It must have given the people an amazing wow effect. More still, that the, this big square where we are, called Temenos, 160 per 120 meters roughly, had also another extra colonnade, which unfortunately didn't survive, gave that wow effect an extra wow, which is today lost to us. When it comes to the temple itself, in front of you at the very moment, it was most probably never finished. I mentioned that the city citizens were divided into 12 kind of tribes, each associated with a god. Most probably there were rivalries. Supposedly, second century, the golden age, they start upgrading the temple of Zeus. Then they left the upgrade in the middle. They started building this temple to Artemis, which then was left unfinished. They went back to the temple of Zeus to finish that. A little local Game of Thrones, kinda. Unfortunately, I did not find the statue to Artemis, so Aphrodite has to suffice. So, although the temple of Artemis is unfinished, and most of the complex, the gates and the stairs are not there anymore, just imagining it all, it is second of my highlights. 
And here in theory, we should finish, because we've seen all the important bits and pieces of ancient Rome. Have we though? Here is not Pompeii of the East, because here history doesn't stop in 1st century AD. Here history keeps on living. And when I say ancient Rome, ancient Rome did not fall in the 5th century. The western part of the Roman Empire did, but here in the East, antiquity, ancient Rome keeps on living. So from my point of view, well, Western history says Middle Ages begin end of 5th century. From my point of view, in the East, antiquity keeps on living until the 7th century, the conquests of Islam. But my point of view aside, this is the time and an empire commonly known as Byzantine. And actually here in Geraza, they consider the beginning of the Byzantine Empire already in 324. So the moment Christianity starts becoming pretty much the official religion of ancient Rome. So actually, following that logic, a lot of things that we see, a lot of monuments are not from ancient Rome, but from Byzantine Empire. And actually, at the very moment, we are entering the oldest church called the Cathedral from the 5th century. Not much is left, but you can still see a typical third of every day basilica uh, layout. We are in the main nave and on the sides are the lateral naves. And also you will see here the temple of Zeus and Artemis in a sense. They begin a new career as quarries. Plenty of interesting bits and pieces, colonnades and the such from those two temples were used in the building of the cathedral. Well, as the cathedral did not survive, the only thing that we can do is theorize today about how it would look like. And here you have two examples. But let me take you now for a moment again to the Cardo, because here you can also see bits and pieces of the Byzantine Empire. Supposedly those kind of high sidewalks on both sides is also 4th, 5th century, so Byzantine Empire. And again, the material is used from the Temple of Zeus. A good example, you will find every now and then such little niches. Originally, they would contain some little statues, and I actually found one niche with a statue of a goddess still there. Anyway, let's jump back to the cathedral again, as in front of it is a very simple fountain, but supposedly here, once a year, instead of water, wine would flow because in the end the first miracle of Christ was turning water into wine. He has a little problem. In the pagan world there was also a god performing such miracles, Dionysos, god of wine himself, and already Pliny the Elder, an important Roman writer, would say that in Gerasa, during one of the festivals to Dionysos, wine would flow instead of water. So here's one interesting detail, but another is, during the festivals to Dionysos, things would happen that we would call today sexual orgies. So, most probably, the cathedral stands where the temple to Dionysos used to stand before. That was the first god, the first temple that had to be replaced, so we can kind of assume also cathedral is the first proper big church in Geraza. Now what you are seeing around you is a separate church to Saint Theodore and again not much has survived unfortunately. In total they actually uncovered 15 churches in Geraza. So let me show you just one more to Saints Damian and Cosma from the 6th century because here you will see something that many people associate with Byzantium and I'm one of those people, a beautiful floor mosaic. And actually this is something that ancient Romans in pagan times used as well, but I have a feeling it was more in private quarters. I think it was the Byzantine Empire which started using it as a regular flooring for churches. But also, you will find it in private quarters. The Hippodrome, abandoned in the 6th-7th century, became 
private quarters, the shops especially, and because they were private houses now, some of them had also beautiful floor mosaics like the one below you now. But this time it's not the mosaics that are the highlight of the Byzantine period. In the basement of the Temenos of the Temple of Artemis, they found one of the oldest machines in the world, a proto-industrial sawmill, which works along pretty simple principle actually. You have water moving the big wheel. The wheel's vertical movement is converted into horizontal movement, which is powering two huge saws, cutting wood and even limestone. Here's a view from the top for any engineers watching. And of course, what we see today, the machine is a reconstruction, but blocks of limestone were found, which proved that such a machine would and did work here. And it's very important because supposedly such machines were either invented in medieval China or medieval Europe. Well, turns out Byzantine Empire was first already in the 6th century in what we call today the Near East. Such machines were used and that's considered the most important find in Geraza. No wonder. So what toppled the city then? 6th century, it's still creative. Wars, epidemies, religious strife. But still, even after the Islamic conquest, the place must have had some life if they found remains of a congregational mosque. The last straw is what we already had back in Philadelphia, Vel Amman, 749 catastrophic earthquake. And that's pretty much the end of the city. Plenty of rubble that you see walking around Gaza today is the remnant of that earthquake exactly. And then came a term that we already introduced before, Bedouinization. So for a thousand years, with a little exception of the Crusades, nobody lived here. Now Bedouins, they do not build houses made of stone. So the city did not become a quarry. Nobody used it. Nobody used the stone from Geraza because nobody around the region would build cities from stone. And this is how you see in the photos how Geraza looked like even in the middle of the 19th century. Who changed the situation? Our dear Circassians. Pretty much like back in Philadelphia, they started living late 19th century in the ruins of Geraza. So they pretty much built the modern town of Gerash. Fortunately, they were settling mostly in the eastern side of ancient Geraza, which was probably uh, since the beginning residential, and the western side with all the grand public buildings was still mostly untouched. Plus, late 19th century, there are already plenty of people like archaeologists and the such understanding that this place is special. And you can see now some photos late 19th, beginning of 20th century, when the works began and they continue till the very day. So let me show you some faces of people whose hard work made the archaeological park what it is today. An amazing place that we can visit and enjoy. Thank you very much for that. Mind you, although the place here looks very comfy, I also worked very hard. And although some people were making fun of me, you may ask where I got all the info from? Well, reading all the information possible. Well, I have to say, Vicky wasn't only being silly, she also worked very hard. Plenty of photos you see is her doing, including one of my favorites. Turns out ancient Geraza has some new residents and here you see them enjoying their little home. But for us, it is pretty much the moment to say goodbye to the beautiful, awesome ruins of ancient Geraza. Spoiler alert, we liked it more than Petra. But also, after so much exploration, we felt hungry. So it is time for food and shout out to the previous episode, we found a Yemeni restaurant. Turns out also Yemenites find a new home in Jordan. But also a shout out to the next episode. 
some more mosaics because in the next episode we are going to visit another very interesting place we're going to deal with another very important piece of the jordanian puzzle we're going to go full-on mosaic mode and also we're going to see a place which is kind of simple but one of the most important places on earth for roughly 1.5 billion people so for now thank you very much i hope you enjoyed geraza as much as we did and uh, we're gonna see you soon.